Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back one more time, at least for now, with our i3 test bench computer that I built for less than 375 bucks because PNY heard about what I was doing and sent over a whole bunch of GPUs for me to test. This has been keeping me busy uh, all weekend, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. We've got a 1070, a 1060, a 1050 Ti that was in the last video. Uh, we got a 950 that they sent a while ago, and this 750 Ti, and we're going to see what the performance differentials are on each of them, and I'm going to make a recommendation as to uh, which GPU is best paired up with your budget PC build. It's going to be a fun video. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that all of these were provided by PNY free of charge. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. I am probably going to hang on to one or two of these just for future testing, but I would like to do a couple of giveaways on these, so I'm going to uh, make sure PNY is okay with that. If they're not, I will be sending a few of these back and just hanging on to the ones we might use uh, in future videos for benchmarking and whatnot here on the channel. All right, so let's take a look now at all these different cards and see what makes them tick. Now, each of them is powered by an NVIDIA GPU. The red cards are running with NVIDIA GPUs that are slightly overclocked, so they run faster than NVIDIA's reference design might call for, and as a result, uh, PNY has put in uh, pretty beefy heat sinks and fans to keep these processors uh, cool because they are running faster than uh, their reference design stipulates, and Overclocked cards will give you better performance than ones that are not overclocked, even if you have the same chip in each. Now, this big one here uh, will require a big case and a big power supply. So the bigger you go, the more room you need and the more juice you need to power it. Uh, this is the GTX 1070. There is another card above this one called the 1080, but I figured for a low-cost build, this is probably the overkill uh, portion of it. Uh, you can certainly go higher than this, but there's certainly no need to with an i3 processor. Uh, you've got an external power connector on most of these cards. This card requires there's 150 watts of power just for itself. So if you've got a small power supply, it's probably not going to cut it. Uh, you want to look at, at probably at a minimum a 700 watt power supply just to be safe because these cards can draw a lot, especially when you're really hammering them with your uh, favorite AAA title. Uh, this one's got eight gigabytes of video RAM built in. I've got a link down below to a spreadsheet with more uh, particulars about the CUDA cores and megahertz of each of these things. Uh, this one sells for about $400, $399 bucks right now. So this costs more than our computer computer build did. Uh, it's not unusual for GPUs to be a big portion of your uh, overall spend, but on a budget PC, this one might be a little overkill, but we'll see how it does with this hardware in a second. Now, if you're looking for horsepower with, you know, for less money, uh, this one might be worth looking at. It doesn't take up as much room in your case, so it'll fit into a smaller case, perhaps. Again, you want to measure everything out and make sure you can fit these things in there before you buy. Uh, this is the GTX 1060. It's got six gigabytes of video RAM and sells for $289. Uh, it requires about 120 watts through its power port over there. So a little less power, a little less room, and it might be a nice little compromise if you want something better than uh, the 1050 Ti we looked at in the last video, which is this card. Uh, not too shabby looking here, about the same size as the 1060. Uh, this one, as configured, has a 4 gigabyte uh, video memory built in, 75 watt power requirement, so it requires less power. You could probably work this off of a 300 watt power supply, maybe, a little iffy on that, but you could probably get by with it. Uh, and it sells for about $150, and I think out of all of them, this is probably the sweet spot uh, for what you might want to look at with a low cost PC build. Now, this next one is no longer made, at least I don't think it's still available. This is powered by a last generation GTX 950. It actually looks very similar to the 1050 Ti we just looked at a second ago, uh, but this one will uh, use about 65 watts of power. It has two gigabytes of video memory built in, and I'm including this one and this one just so you can see a comparison as to uh, how these might be uh, running compared to the latest generation of hardware. So these three here are running with the new Pascal architecture. Uh, these two are with the older generation NVIDIA hardware. Now, this one's kind of interesting, especially if you have a small case or you don't have a lot of power available to you through your power supply. Uh, this 750 Ti is powered by the slot. There's no need to plug in external power to it. So what you can do with this is just pop it in and you're ready to go. There's really no uh, need for additional power. You probably definitely want at least a 300 watt power supply just to be safe, but uh, this little guy only consumes about 60 watts of power out of your system and it gets it all uh, through the connector that it will have with your motherboard. So that is a, uh, probably a solution for a lot of folks who have uh, very small PCs with very small power ports. You don't need a lot of room to use this with, and uh, more than likely it'll work. The best uh, uh, example I can give for why this might be an attractive GPU 
is to go back and look at my Acer, uh, whatever it was from about a week ago that I reviewed that didn't have a lot of room inside the case. Uh, this would work perfectly in there. In fact, I might do a follow-up video with this GPU and see how it performs. And PMY just came out with a 1050 Ti uh, in this footprint that I believe is also slot powered. I'm going to try to get one of those in and see maybe what the difference is between the 750 Ti and that 1050 Ti in this mini uh, GPU configuration. Let's now take a look and see what the performance is like on these. So we're going to start with the 3D Mark CloudGate test, and I like to run that test because it works on a PC with no GPU like this one installed at all. We can just run it on the base Intel hardware, and you can see on that test we get a score that ranges from 6,866 all the way up to 16,734. Now, if you just relied on the score itself, you wouldn't see all that much progression in performance because uh, that score takes into account the physics test, which is all CPU based. So remember, we're running with a pretty low-end i3 dual-core processor here and that physics score never changes because we didn't change out the CPU as we upgraded GPUs along the way. So take a look at the graphical uh, benchmarks here insofar as their frame rates are concerned and you get a huge jump between that 1050 Ti uh, and the 1060 and more of an incremental increase in performance between the 1060 and the 1070 primarily because you're going from a pretty low power consuming card up to a greater power consuming card and uh, you'll see a bigger jump in those initial uh, steps there from a 1050 to 1060 60 than you might uh, across the line up into the 1080s. But it does give you a good idea as to uh, where you might see your raw graphic performance tend to go uh, as you're upgrading cards. Now, one of the things, though, is that that CPU will be a bottleneck from time to time. And we're going to take a look now at Grand Theft Auto 5, specifically because they have a great benchmark tool that will show you the exact same image uh, run over and over again so we can sync them up and just see how these uh, different graphic cards perform when they have to work in tandem with the processor. And we'll see where those bottlenecks start to come into play. Now, we are assuming here that if you are building a low-cost PC that you would likely uh, put together a 1080p display to go with it. Uh, we can, of course, try to push the resolution higher, which we'll talk about after we run this GTA 5 five test with another benchmark. So let's take a look at Grand Theft Auto 5's performance. Now I want to begin first with the settings that I'm using here for the test. And I'm using uh, settings that were recommended by the NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which is the software that comes with their driver package that will give you some optimization suggestions for popular games. And I'm going to run the test on all the other cards uh, with those same exact settings. And we'll talk about uh, what some of this might mean for graphical image quality and resolution a little bit later. But I did want to make sure I had a very apples to apples look here as we were going through all of it. And what I'm going to be doing here is running this through my Final Cut Pro uh, timeline because I actually found a pretty useful use case here for the uh, touch bar because I can uh, go through and scrub through this uh, test pretty easily here. So uh, what I'm going to do is just start it off at the beginning of the test here with this uh, Hollywood sign. And uh, what you'll see here, and I'll just pause it in uh, one second here, is that we're getting uh, a nice breakdown here of frame rate. So we've got 64 frames per second on the 1050 Ti in this spot, 76 on the 1060, and 83.6 on the 1070. So you can see in this scene at least, uh, the GPU is more important perhaps than CPU. And we see a nice progression here uh, in performance as we're scrubbing through it. So I thought that was rather interesting. Similar things you might see uh, in other portions of the test also that rely less on the CPU and more on the graphical horsepower as we're uh, stepping through these different things. This test in particular was rather interesting as well because we're getting uh, frame rates around 100 frames per second on the 1060 and 1070 and only about 76 on the 1050 Ti. Uh, so you can see it really does vary quite a bit depending on what's going on in the game. And that's one of the things is that you know raw graphical horsepower isn't always the picture here with uh, games like Grand Theft Auto 5. There are other factors like the CPU as well, but there are times where uh, the GPU does make a difference, like right here, where we've got 50 frames per second on the 1050 Ti, 75 on the 1060, and then 81 uh, on the 1070. But let me fast forward a little bit here to uh, the portion of the test where we get into more of a gameplay kind of thing, where the guys are jumping into their van and uh, getting away from the scene of the crime here. And uh, you'll see here when we start off, there isn't that much of a margin between all the different things going on in the scene here. And the reason is is, is that uh, there's a lot more to GTA 5 than just graphics. They have to make this city live. They have to have all these people running around and these cars being tracked properly and the physics models and all the other stuff. So as we're going through this here, you can see that uh, sometimes the GPU makes no difference at all in performance because uh, the CPU is kind of the bottleneck here as we're uh, running through the world. So you can see uh, really that we're pretty much at the same frame rate on all of these here as we're uh, going through something that you might actually do in actual gameplay uh, while you're playing the game 
scene here. So I can fast forward here to the uh, explosion with the, uh, the tanker truck here, and you can see that um, there isn't much of a difference at all uh, going up to the 1070. Now I wanted to just do one last GTA 5 test with the older cards so we can get a good uh, comparison as to where technology is headed. So check out the 750 Ti scores on this test, about 40 frames per second in this scene uh, versus about 60 that we're seeing on the 1050 Ti. I'm going to upload, by the way, these uh, benchmarks in their entirety to the Extras channel so you can check it out there and play them all the way through versus my uh, pausing and stopping here. But again, these are the the same settings we tested with all the cards, and you can see what a difference a couple of years makes in uh, product development here. Here's the getaway scene. Now before, on the higher end cards, the CPU was the bottleneck in finding faster frame rates here. Uh, now we'll see that the GPU on the 750 Ti is, because while the 1050 is pulling about 70 frames per second right here, maybe about 60 depending on what spot we're at, uh, we're only getting about 40 or so out of the 750 on uh, this particular test. The 950 does hold its own pretty decently, so it's not uh, too far behind, but but I think you will see better performance overall uh, on the 1050 Ti, which is why I recommend this one if you're building an inexpensive PC. So really for under $500 or so, pair this up with your low cost Intel build and you've got yourself uh, a game console that's probably better than a game console. And to take this a step further, I ran the Time Spy test at 1440p and you can see that our uh, measly little $300 PC can pull off 38 frames per second on that first graphics test with the 1070 built in and about 34 frames per second on its second graphics test, and you can see how things drop off as you uh, work your way down. So I think there are things, again, that we could do with these cards on this low-end PC, provided that we're targeting our settings at things that specifically favor the GPU versus the CPU uh, to get better performance out of that. But the reality is this. I think if you're building a $300 PC like this, uh, you should probably be realistic in what you're putting together. I don't think it makes much sense to build a $300 PC and then stick a $400 GPU on top of it. So my pick for this uh, is going to be the 1050 Ti, because I think you can get uh, decent console-grade gaming out of this thing that uh, will perform better than an Xbox or a PlayStation might at 1080p with better image quality and very consistent frame rates even in demanding games. And you'll see better performance out of GTA 5 and others that uh, tax the CPU more heavily as you upgrade to higher processors. Maybe spend a little bit more on an i5 versus an i3. Go to a quad-core i5 versus that dual-core i3 or something like that and you'll see uh, that performance increase as you do that. But uh, I think for 300 bucks plus the uh, cost of the $150 1050 Ti GPU, uh, you can have a very good experience out of something like this and I really have a good time with it. This is kind of a newer topic for the channel because I don't usually get into these PC builds and that kind of thing. We explore it every once in a while, but I think we're at a point now where putting these PCs together is so easy in comparison to how it used to be when I did it 20 years ago uh, that I think it should not appear as scary to consumers as it might look visually. This is a very scary thing to see all this exposed circuitry and uh, chips and thermal paste and all this other stuff, but it's actually pretty easy and there's uh, less ways to screw it up. And even if you do screw it up, there's often a lot of safeguards now built into these motherboards to prevent fires and smokes and, and all this other crap that uh, used to happen to us back in the old days building PCs. So I think if you are a general consumer who's not afraid of what this looks like, or maybe look at it a little bit more to get less afraid, I think it's something you should consider if you want a high-performance PC uh, without spending a lot of money. There's a great website called PC Parts Picker that allows you to kind of build a shopping list and uh, put together something that works, because I'm really at the point now where I'm starting to recommend this to friends who uh, want a nice computer and uh, don't want or don't like what they're seeing in choices out there uh, from major brand retailers. I think you can do pretty well uh, building it yourself. So I'd love to see some of your configurations down in the comment section below. We'll probably revisit this in the future, so let me know other things that we may have missed in this video or things we should explore in more detail in the near future. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.